So you think that the 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 Arise or compatriot is better than uh, the Nigeria we hailed the? Absolutely, uh, because if you look at the lyrics of the song, you know, Arise or compatriot, Nigeria's call to be. I mean, it's almost like every part of the world. Like I live in the U.S. Whenever they play that song, there's something it means to us. You know, it reminds of us of home. Then, if you look at the content of that national anthem you know it talks about you know love it talks about faith it talks i mean how you serve the fatherland you know in love and strength and faith and there's those three words there's what it means personally to me uh, and i've thought about it i've spoken to people about it people are demoralized about nigeria in the diaspora saying to them you know what you have to serve your fatherland in love which means you, you don't have to think about what the country can do for you. You think, you think about what you can give to the country. I mean, in, in, in strength, talks about your potential. And in faith, talks about, you know, seeing the invisible and bringing it to pass. You know, so now that we have to retire that, I'm looking at the new one here. Yeah, and I'm a Nigeria we hail thee, okay? Um, you know, though tribe and tongues may differ in, in brotherhood, we stand. Uh, and I'm asking myself, there are lots of questions I'm asking. I've not processed it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a law abiding citizen of Nigeria. I'm going to sing it. But, you know, like I wrote on, on my social media page that the spirit, th there's the lyrics of a song, there's the spirit of the song. And I've tried to sing it a number of times since yesterday. I'm not sure it got me teary like the other one. Mm. Um, when you talk about spirit, what do you mean? Okay, so um, I, can, I can say to you, Shenwa, I love you, right? Um, but there is someone else that will say, Shenwa, I love you. It cuts straight to your spirit. It cuts straight to your soul. You could literally feel it, right? And so if I'm singing, a, and that's the difference between when um, you sing some songs and it, it just gets you to dance, but you sing some other song, it gets you to tears. That's the spirit of a song, that the capacity of a song to galvanize you in a particular direction, to move you out of your com and, I, and I'll share. I mean, something that happened. There was a day I was. I feel I was racially um, randomly picked. You know, um, while I was going through immigration because of my green passport. You know, and I was subjected to what I could say was. You know, um, uh, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't a good experience for me. Right, and you know, as I, I was eventually released. When they released me, I noticed the piano at that airport, and I got on the piano and I started playing. Arise, O compatriots. Almost every Nigerian close to where I was moved close to me and they started singing the song. That's the power of this song. You look at our footballers when they're, um, look at our athletes. Um, I think our, what's her name now? The young lady that, um, you know, is the world champion in 100 meters autos. You saw that when they played the national team, she had tears on her face. And it's the same experience for many of our footballers, many of us out there. You know, that's the spirit of this song to say, we own it. It tells us about the potential of our country, you know, what this country is capable of doing and what this country has given to us. You know, but the new one, maybe with time, we will get used to it. So that's why I can't totally fault it because, I mean, I've only been singing it for like two or three days, you know, but um, the, 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 the spirit of the old one cuts differently because it resonates deeply and it has the capacity to move someone like me into serious action. It's, uh, it's more than 40 years now that... Um um that um the new the well it's the arise that it's confusing because um one is older uh now one the the the, the, the younger one the younger version is now becoming the older one now so it's confusing when you say the older the newer because the older one has become the new one the new one is becoming the older one and you know it's getting a bit confusing so there are those who will say looking at the letters and the spirit of nigeria we hail thee it breathes more of um, unity it talks more about nationhood um, yes, there is an awakening, there is a summoning of a Nigerian person in the Arise of Compatriot. But because of the diversity and those who will believe that, look, um, 
the Nigeria we held the coming from the colonial uh, tendency and all other view that it, 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 it sort of uh, brings out what you what should unify us as a people talks about our diversity and look if if I mean for those who did linguistics and those who did um, who, who st- semantics and all other view they probably will analyze it differently but how do you then uh, analyze for someone like you who live in Nigeria the spirit of the song, the 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 meanings of the song, and perhaps the the Nigeria that in some sense some people will say they are tired of it because of issues of governance and what the Nigerian uh, the, the Nigerian nation has for them. I mean, I can't complain too much because my generation we literally uh, got a benefit of going to the university for free, going to secondary school almost for free. Uh, I went to a primary from primary school, but I mean, the, those who will say that uh, Nigeria has not really benefited them, and uh, there's a point in our history that that sense of nationhood has to be awakening in people. So Nigeria, we hail thee. There's a time that we need to now rise up and start looking at the essence of our nation. I mean, what what gets to you as a Nigerian who lives in uh, in the U.S., for example? When you see things that work in that in that climb, and you come home and you see things that don't that doesn't work, do you think for a moment that maybe there's a solution in sight? Um, I mean, you know. So let me backtrack a bit before I answer this particular question. You know, the other side to this um, two anthems is um, who wrote these anthems, right? I don't know any nation in the world that the author or the writer of their national anthem is a foreigner. I, I don't know. I mean, I, one of the things I do in my pastime is to learn the national anthem of various countries in the world. So I sing the national anthem of Israel, um, Britain, Spain, um, you know, several countries, South Africa, uh, Ghana. I can, I can literally sing all this national anthem, you know, um, Germany. The German national anthem is very funny because it included their beer and their women in their national anthem, right? And so I'm looking at the two. If we need a new national anthem, I mean, Nigerian music industry has gone globally, right? Global right now, and um, it's a time where our musicians are everywhere. Now, why don't we commission them to submit, you know, um, samples of a new national anthem that can galvanize us in the f- um, future direction? You know, because we don't know that the younger generation may be totally disconnected from this new thing that we're we're bringing from the past. And so, from the standpoint of nationhood, citizenship, you know, you look at the so it's almost like the old national anthem reminds me of colonization. It reminds me of you know when British colonized Nigeria because the authors of that song and the music um, of that song is from foreigners. The, new, the one we're now discarding is Nigerian. So if you want something new, let's create something new. But back to your question. You see, um, for the first time in my life, I flew into Nigeria this year, and maybe I felt a bit proud to be a Nigerian because for the first time I got into Murita Mohammed Airport and there was no one begging for money. Um, the ACs worked, the signages worked, the conveyor belt worked, I mean, because, I mean, there was the day I returned from India many years ago, and then the conveyor belt did not work because they said the person that had the key went to church. So we waited three hours for the guy to come back. But this time around, everything seemed to work. And the one that really moved me the most was the fact that the trolleys, I mean, I, people said that wasn't their experience, but the trolleys were free when I came in. Right, and so the internet worked for the first time in a Nigerian airport. Um, the Wi Fi, so uh, I, I saw I came in and I felt okay, it looks like um, you know, things are changing. And then I flew locally and I noticed that they called the um, um, veterans to board first. I mean, that kind of reminded me of you know, living in the US and stuff like that, but. Beyond that, you have to look at, by the time I got in and I started interacting with the people, you know, I felt so sad. You know, I had to take Uber. I looked at how much, I'm asking my workers, I mean, my staff in Nigeria, how do they cope? How do you come to work? How do you, because I'm looking at how much people are spending. I'm looking at the cost of living and it doesn't really make sense to me. You know, so I'm looking, I can't compare yours and and that's what I always try not to do, compare yours to Nigeria, but compared to 
the amount of money that is available, I think that we should actually be doing better. I mean, I drove around Lagos. There were still, you know, roads that were very, very bad, dirty areas. And I'm like, Lagos is supposed to be the benchmark for everything we're doing. You know, I couldn't believe what I saw in some of those areas. You know, so, but I believe that the people that destroyed Nigeria are not foreigners. They are Nigerians. I've always believed that it would take Nigerians to rebuild Nigeria. And that's why I'm not, I'm going to cut the government a bit of slack because it's just one year. Um, but they, I still think that there's a whole lot that could have been done differently rather than focusing on um, um, national anthem. And, um, and every time I try to listen to the conversation in the National Assembly, you know, um, in, from the U.S., and, you know, I feel sad hearing what they have to say sometimes about different issues about a nationhood. But it comes back to the fact that, you know, if we don't produce empathetic and awesome individuals from our families, because all the people we call our leaders were taken from our families and from our society. If we don't raise a new generation of people who are empathetic, who understand stewardship and service, you know, we'll skip going around in circles. Because if you get the right people in a power, who understand humanity, who understand value for human life, who understand what it means to serve the country, you know, not for what it's trying to get, but for what it's trying to give. You know, if we get those kind of people in power, and they will be Nigerians, I believe our nations will be built. So I think somehow there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. I believe that a new generation is going to rise that will do what is right. Um, and that gives me a bit of consolation, even though sometimes I have doubts in my mind, because when I was born, my mother used to pray that um, God give us leaders after your heart, and then my mother prayed that prayer every day when I was born. My mother is 83 right now. That prayer hasn't been answered. So sometimes I'm like, hmm, are we not caught in the web now? We are parents and our children are now here. Um, are they not going to get to age 40 and 50s right now and wonder will Nigeria be better? But somehow, I think with visionary leadership, um, I'm sure we'll get it right. I mean, it's interesting that uh, the, the new old national anthem now has a spirit of the, of the British person. It was uh, composed by uh, Lillian Williams and uh, a bird uh, who, um, written by Lillian Williams, but uh, Lillian John Williams, then um, uh, it was then composed by Francis Berda. But the Arise of Compatriot was uh, composed uh, by the lyrics written by P.O. Aderi Bigbe, uh, John Ilechuku, uh, the, Dr. Shola Omoigui, M.M. Uh, Emma Etim, Akman, and B.A. Ogunaike. I mean, there are those who will say, the Arise to Computer as the spirit of a Nigerian writer. And uh, so, I mean, uh, singing a song that was composed by a British person as our national anthem, uh, I think there needs to be some more education, don't you think, about, because each time you sing the song, the writer and the composer, not being a Nigerian, you're singing a Nigerian national anthem, being composed and written by non-Nigerians, and, uh, and you discard the one written, composed by Nigerians. I don't know how it makes anybody feel. What do you think? It worries me, and I'll tell you, I mean, I've defended Nigeria everywhere um, I've traveled to, um, including in meetings, high-level meetings in the U.S., in my sector, um, you know, because I will not allow anybody to rubbish my country, because I always say to them, I am Nigeria. And um, I remember there was a time um, where in a family life coaching association conference, and um, they came with a new certification, and they said everybody should take that certification. And I asked them, on what basis are we all going to take the certification? Does it incorporate the African spirit and the African reality and the Nigerian reality? Oh, and they said, is applicable to everyone. So I asked a simple question, all the professors in the room. I said, which of you have ever seen any movie from Nollywood? They didn't even know what Nollywood was. So I said, if you don't understand Nollywood, how do you understand us enough to be able to say that this incorporates our reality? And the second example is when many of the children are diagnosed of ADHD in Nigeria, in, in, in the diaspora there. I've had to stand for some of them to say, why don't we rethink this? Because our children, you know, are coming from a place where we don't have winter. They run around the streets around the year. And now coming to a place where, um, you know, you, you, you are literally indoor, you know, around the year, except during summer, you know. And I say, what you call hyperactiveness could have just been their reality based on where they're coming from. And that's me trying to explain and educate my white colleagues on what is right, on the reality, the nuances of what makes a Nigerian. And so looking at our national anthem, and I'm singing a song as my national anthem written by a foreigner 
Who doesn't understand my Nigerian reality? Who doesn't understand the fact that I have to sell gala, that I have to run after bosses, that I have to do all those things, you know? And that's why I, I always say to people, when you hear arise, oh compatriots, you know exactly what it means. Nigeria's call base, your nation calling you. You know, maybe we could have even tweaked that if we needed to add a few things by Nigerians. And that's one of the things I had a problem with, the fact that I'm singing a song written by a foreigner. I don't know which other nation on the planet, you know, has got a national anthem. It's called a national anthem. Except you're going to tell me that the authors are Nigeria, I mean, uh, uh, um, Nigerians. Because... At the end of the day, we're saying by Nigeria, by Nigeria, um, do uh, us, um, doctors should not japa. Everybody stay in Nigeria. Do build Nigeria. But then the first thing we have to do is to get back to a national anthem that was written by um, you know foreigners. 